Hey everyone, I'm Margo Josh, and this is the new iPad Air 4 or the new iPad Air 2020 as some call it. Now, I want to get straight into the answer right here. Is 64 gigabytes enough if you want to do digital art for your iPad or on your iPad, especially if you're using Procreate? My answer is no, unless you follow the four tips that I'm about to give you right now, because otherwise you're going to have a lot of headaches that I've had to experience. And hopefully the goal with this video is that I can prevent you from running into those um, headaches and mistakes so that you can use your iPad smoothly and not have to worry about paying for the extra 256 gigs if you can manage the 64 and save yourself a few hundred dollars. All right, so the first tip is going to be to use cloud services. Now, that sounds really easy. A lot of these tips are, but there's some really important things that I've discovered. So the three main ones that I'm going to recommend are going to be iCloud Drive, Google Drive, and Dropbox. Now, I personally don't use Dropbox. I do have Google Drive, but to be honest, I definitely am going to recommend that you use iCloud Drive because it's integrated with the Apple OS. You know, it's integrated with their whole entire ecosystem. And Google Drive can take a while to transfer files. And it's just, it just doesn't feel as smooth transitioning your files back and forth. So to explain what I mean, I have my iPad here, my regular iPad Pro that I'm going to show you since it has a lot more artwork on it. I'm going to open up Procreate. Then I'm going to swipe up and bring up the files app to the right. And then now I'm in the iCloud drive and I'm going to go ahead and select. Let's just select these random documents here. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold and then drag. There's 47 documents here and I'm going to drag them over into this folder. And so what's going to happen is it's going to start uploading the items to iCloud. And then you're going to see it's going through and it's going to be relatively quick. Now, the thing about this is it seems that iCloud does not necessarily upload them completely. It just kind of gets it going and then it goes on to the next one. Whereas Google Drive and I'm assuming Dropbox will make sure it's completely uploaded before you can move on to the next file, which is why it seems to take really, really long. So you can see those cloud icons right there. Those represent that they're still, you know, in the process of being uploading and then some are waiting. However, it's still going through and it just feels a lot more fast and it's always going to be connected really directly compared to, you know, the Google Drive and Dropbox. So you're not going to have to worry about it not ever finishing. It's just always going to be connected like that. However, there is a serious issue with how iCloud works on the iPad, even though I get talked it up so much. And that's because basically iCloud loves to keep your iPad full with any recent files you've uploaded to it. So I'm going to show you exactly what I mean. And so here on my iPad Air, I just uploaded all those documents on my Pro. It's already available for me to see here on the Air. And you can see they're all still on the cloud because they have that little icon there that's showing that, you know, they're available to download. Now that all may seem great, but the problem with iCloud is it loves to keep your iPads full, stocked up with anything recent that you've uploaded to it. So I'm going to show you what I mean. This can be very, very problematic if you're trying to back up all of your stuff at once. So what I'm going to go ahead and do first is open up the iPad storage so that you guys can see where my storage is at right now. Um, I have 15 gigabytes used and you can see that Procreate's at 407 megabytes. And if I scroll down here, you can see files is at 7.3 megabytes used. So let's keep that in my memory and then let's go ahead and upload some files to iCloud from this iPad. So right now I only have these few documents here, you know, part of the included ones. I'm going to go ahead and rotate my iPad here and then I'm going to bring up the files app just like we did before. And then I'm going to go ahead and select all of these. And then just like we did on my iPad Pro, drag them over here and upload them to this test folder. And so it's going to upload them and it was pretty, pretty quick. You didn't even see the loading screen because it was just a few documents. Now let's go ahead, rotate my iPad again, and let's see what the storage says in the storage iPad storage menu. So I'm going to go out of it and refresh it here. And then let's see 15.6 gigabytes used. So that's a little bit more. And if I scroll down here, we can see Procreate is at 494 megabytes. So that's even more than it was. And we can see Files app is at 94 megabytes. What did I do? I just uploaded documents. Why did I get more on my iPad, right? What iCloud does is it uploads stuff and then downloads it back again. But the crazy thing is, even after doing this, let's say you want to delete those files. They're like, oh, okay, where are these files? Where did they come from? They're uploaded, right? So here we go. So some of them aren't uploaded. 
some of them are still downloaded and you see that the cloud disappears but if you delete it then it's just it's going to be gone right see how quickly it moved to procreate when i clicked on it it's because it was already downloaded and if i delete it it's just gone so it's not there anymore so you don't want to do that so how do we get rid of those files that are up there and the only way to do that is going to be to delete the files app itself so this doesn't seem like an issue right oh it's just a few you know you just gained a few megabytes josh you still have you know it's still not even 16 gigabytes full yet but the thing is when i did that on my ipad pro when i was trying to back it up earlier i had over 100 gigs of procreate files that i was trying to back up all at once what happened was I nearly bricked my iPad because it downloaded so much stuff back that I had only less than one gigabyte free. And when that happens on your iPad, guess what? You can't access the internet anymore. You can't do anything. I couldn't even open the app store. So you have to delete stuff in order to be able to use your iPad again. But again, just like we found, deleting stuff from the iCloud drive is bad because we're just deleting stuff that's there that we want to keep on the drive but not on our actual ipad and you can't really change those settings so the only way to do it accurately is to delete the files app which is where all of those files tend to be saved i'll tell you another workaround this issue when we at the end of this video but i just want to make sure that you guys see it quickly here because it's pretty serious i don't know if there's ever going to be a way to change this but unfortunately that's just how ipad works it always wants to or icloud works it always wants to bring things back down from the cloud so that they're available for you to use even if you just uploaded them for backing up and you don't want to have them here again so the second thing you want to do is really quick and easy is i don't know if this was available in older versions of ios or older versions of procreate but in procreate specifically which i know many of you use and i highly recommend you can go down to the settings here and let's find procreate and it has a setting where you can have document storage and now here it's set to icloud drive so it automatically uploads and stores my documents on the drive if i change it to on my ipad it saves them on my ipad only right and then if i have it over here to the other options it does that as well i found that even if it's on on my ipad and i try to upload things to the icloud drive just like i did previously it still has that problem so don't think that you're going to be able to circumvent it by keeping it on your ipad because it's not going to help icloud is always going to be trying to keep things um, in track and keep things available to you even if sometimes you can't even find where those files are what you're also going to want to do is go ahead here and go down to preferred file format and you're going to click procreate here and then you're going to see it has a lot more options and so if you want to keep track of the videos that are recorded when you're using procreate make sure you pick that file and then if you want to keep track of just your artwork and all the layers and the maximum quality you can click psd and then i recommend png or jpeg if you just want to be able to see quickly um, all of your old artworks without preserving all of the quality and just laugh at how bad you were two years ago <laughs> These file formats are what iCloud or anything really saves to when you drag and drop from Procreate over, just like I was doing in the previous example. So if I click Procreate, it's going to save a .procreate file. If I set it to JPEG, it's going to save over a JPEG. So that's how these settings work. Now, the next thing I recommend is using an external SSD or hard drive to plug into this thing. Although I really don't recommend hard drive because it's probably just not going to be fast enough, but hey, it works. And for this, I have my trusty Samsung uh, t5 ssd that i've purchased a while back um it's so much cheaper i think it's a hundred dollars cheaper than it was and i got the two terabyte version and this is going to allow you to just back things up by connecting a usb-c cable and then you're good to go right again these sound like really simple and obvious solutions but there's a caveat to them that i've noticed that gave me a huge headache so the thing is, if you have an SSD like this, I don't know if it works with hard drives, it probably will, and you're using Windows computers and it's formatted to like NTFS or XFAT or whatever, um, it's going to have a high chance of corrupting your artwork. Now, unfortunately, I don't have an example to show you guys because I was super frustrated watching this happen, but I'll tell you what kind of happens and how it looks. So basically, if I bring open this artwork here from Lowish, um, what will happen is either only half of the image will be downloaded or uploaded and then the rest will be white or black or there's just going to be these random horizontal bars or lines across your painting baked into the file that's bright yellow or 
like, you know, yellow, cyan, or magenta stripes of varying thicknesses. And there can be one or several of them, but it will corrupt in those ways or possibly more ways every 10 files or so, which is really, really painful because sometimes you can't even see those until you open the file um, on your computer and you won't be able to preview them on iCloud like you can here, fortunately, but most of them are not going to show up until you bring them actually onto your computer. So the workaround with this is to format your drive to an Apple file storage system. This is one of the reasons I made a recent purchase to get the M1 MacBook, which I'll talk about later, but I was able to format this to how, you know, Macs format their drives and I tried it and it worked flawlessly and I actually feel like it works faster transferring these files, but the really big downside is you need a Mac to format a drive like this. You can't format a drive for Macs from a PC. You can read them from a PC with uh, external software that you can get, but you can't format it this way. So. If you can somehow find one that's purchased or purchase one that's formatted in advance, that's great. Um, but hopefully you will have a Mac available to where you can format these properly so that you don't have to worry about corruption. And now the last thing I want to recommend that you do is to create a backup. And now fortunately you can do this on whatever you want, a Mac computer or a regular PC, Windows computer, and that is going to preserve everything on your iPad, including every single one of your Procreate files, along with the settings if you make sure to back up via computer versus backing up via iCloud. Now, backups do depend on your iOS version. They will back up the specific version that you have. However, if you're trying to restore, you don't have to worry about that. Even if this is on 14.1 right now, even if we're on 15 one day and I created a backup today at 14.1, I'll always be able to restore. I'll stay at 15, but all of the documents that I had will be back onto my iPad. Now, the caveat with that is that I recently did this for my iPad Pro here. And if I just scroll through, as you can see, this is pretty cool, right? This is what I was talking about 1.5 years ago versus this isn't today. This is when I did this, which is probably sometime in 2019. Um, but getting back on topic, you can see how many files I have, right? I decided that I wanted to get all these files back because they were in a backup that I created in March, right? And it turns out this is over 100 gigs of artworks. And I wanted to restore all these to my iPad after backing up what I created this year so that I could back these up to a place where I could see them easily as Photoshop documents and then reinstall and re-restore my current set of Procreate documents. And so I thought that would be really easy and I could get it done in a day, right? No, it ended up taking me nearly six hours. As a matter of fact, it actually took me much more than that because I had a lot of issues. The thing is, to back up your iPad, it only takes about an hour maybe for something. This is a 256 gigabyte model and I was, uh, I think I had like 40 gigabytes free. It only took me about an hour to back it up. But to restore it after already cleaning this iPad and completely resetting it took me nearly five hours. The reason it took me even longer than that was because my iPad would keep ejecting itself from my computer every hour or so. I don't know what I did to be able to eventually cause it to work. I tried unplugging different things, but at the end of the day, what happened was I kept waking up my iPad like that. And so every now and then, it would, I would click the button, it would say restore in progress, and then I'd wait for like 45 minutes and then make sure to click it again. The screen would turn back on, it would say restore in progress, and eventually it finally finished. Now, I don't know if that was the step or if I did something else, but keep that in mind. I've seen other YouTubers talk about restoring their iPads, and yes, it can take forever. So I say all that to say that if you're trying to use your iPad as a creative device, a creative tool, and you want to make artwork on it for its sole purpose, you really have to be diligent and make sure that you don't try to back everything up all at once unless it's a, you know, iPad iOS backup. Um, that's, of course, you're going to do that all at once, right? But make sure that you're constantly uploading things to the cloud and then dumping them um, here locally if you want to back things up because eventually... If you try to do it all at once, it can have a, you can have a lot of problems and you might not be able to have an easier solution like this to get um, an Apple file system uh, formatted um, SSD in your hands. So make sure that you take the time and you're diligent with it um, and you don't get lazy and forget. And in case you guys are wondering what these dots are on my iPad when the screen is off, it's because of the new paper-like protector, screen protector I put on to help me get some, you know, more 
uh, paper-like feel to my drawings here. Um, but yeah, hopefully you'll be better than that at me. I just like to get a new one and put it back on because I use it as a tool, not as super concerned with where the dots are, but they have some great instructions in case you want to do it perfectly. All right, guys, that's going to be it for me today. If you have any other tips, please feel free to share them in the comments below so that we can all help each other out as we're trying to keep track of our Procreate files and not lose them because it is very important to keep track of your old work. It is very encouraging. I was having a good time laughing and just screaming at my old self, <laughs> wondering why I even decided to render this one sketch out because it just looks so terrible. But hey, that's part of it. We're growing you know, we do something else, we might hate it, we might like it later on down the road, but it's all part of the journey, right? So in that sense, no art is bad, but you know, it's good to improve and all that. Um, but I'm, I've been going on too long. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Peace.